You are a significant, masterful work of art. Wasn't that a great compliment? Although next time, maybe you should be more open to some good feedback. And was that not a constructive critique? The reason I mention this is that today at church, we were learning about the power of words. Words are extremely significant for us because words can heal and words can hurt. Some of the most damaging and some of the most supporting elements of life come from the impact that comes from one's use of words. There's a significant reason why high school bullies tend to be more harmful than primary school bullies, because high school bullies tend to use words more often, and these words are really harmful. And at the same time, support teachers from high schools and PSAs can lend positive advice on how to deal with certain situations, how to build off what you fail to do. Words can heal and words can hurt. And at the church, our minister uh, brought children to the front and challenged them to do something to prove his point about words. He called little children forward and challenged them to make a little drawing on this plate made from toothpaste. And so they did so and they made some pretty intricate uh, flowers, uh, stick figures. One of them made a classic love heart and filled it in to the best of their ability with the toothpaste. By the time they were done, the minister said, all right, well done. Now, try to put the toothpaste back into the toothpaste tube. But of course, with the way that toothpaste work, it's kind of impossible to put the toothpaste back in. Even if you did manage to get the toothpaste back in, the way that these tubes are made is that you can't really inflate them again. The material used to encapsulate the toothpaste is made to protect the toothpaste, and once you squeeze it out, there's basically no going back. As the children were attempting to clean away the toothpaste by putting it back into the toothpaste tubes, the minister said, that's exactly what it's like when you're using your words. He said something along the lines of, can you go back on the words that you said? The children said, no. Sure, you can change your mind and redeem yourself, but once you speak a word, that's you spoken that word. So the point he was trying to make was, be careful with the words you say. Because the words are really tricky to take back, especially if they're harmful words. The minister then reminded us that part of this issue comes from the condition of the human heart. Because often at times, out of the heart comes all this slander and offence. And he told us, if we're feeling bitter in our hearts, then we best be careful with the words that we're saying. It was at this point that he brought up a famous quote from Thumper, from Bambi. If you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. It's quite astounding how much words can affect people. Words are an immaterial thing when you think about it, and yet they're just as real. It's why we feel spiritually moved when we hear poetry. It's why we feel motivated when we hear a motivational speech. It's why we tend to tense up and be bitter whenever someone says something really bad about us or about someone we love and care about. And sure, if you're angry about someone or annoyed about what they did, then it's justified for you to critique them. But try your best to make sure it's constructive criticism. Otherwise, you might be doing more harm to yourself than to the other people you're trying to critique. That and people could look at you the wrong way. For example, if I were to review the Sonic movie and say something along the lines of THOSE CARELESS IDIOTS MADE THE STORY MEDIOCRE THEY WEREN'T EVEN TRYING TO MAKE IT A REALLY GOOD MOVIE HOW DARE THEY? HOW DARE THEY OFFEND SONIC? That wouldn't be very constructive criticism, that would just be slander and hate. Instead, what it could say was, now, they did try their best, but the story was fairly mediocre, but they could improve on it next time. I did like Jim Carrey and the portrayal of Sonic that was handled really well, but the overall mo movie was in this generic formula. But it's good for the families and Sonic fans. Hopefully they'll try again next time. I think that's a better form of criticism. As this ministry was being preached, I was being reminded of a scenario that Jesus Christ was in in terms of the power of words. This outcome provided him to say something constructive and critiquing at the same time. This is a scenario where Jesus and his disciples came across this lady who was caught in the act of adultery. And the Pharisees and the public were getting ready to stone her as punishment. The Pharisees then went up to Jesus and said, Look, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. What should we do, Rabbi? 
if Jesus said, don't stone her, then that's breaking the law, trying to justify a bad thing that she did. But if he said stone her, then his point wouldn't have come across to the Pharisees. So Jesus said, he who is without sin may throw the first stone. Jesus made them stop and think. Jesus geniusly found a way to give the lady a second chance, while simultaneously making everyone else around him think. He who is without sin may cast the first stone. And let's be honest, all of us have sinned at some point. You'd have to be an innocent little baby to throw a stone at this lady. So after everyone left, Jesus went up to the woman and said to her that he's forgiven her and she can sin no more. Words are a very powerful thing, and the most powerful, philosophical, insightful, controversial, beneficial, spiritual, life-changing, inspiring words ever spoken came from Jesus Christ. As for the specific Bible verse, we were looking at James chapter 3, Taming the Tongue. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and it's itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. This verse extends onto two kinds of wisdom, but to stay on topic, we'll just focus on the words. It may be that you're telling a friend off for something immoral that they've done. I don't think spouting hate is going to benefit them. And if anything, it just makes the situation worse. Be gentle and say words like, this may alarm you, or please try to understand, or I'm not trying to offend you. So be careful with what you say, because words don't come back into the mouth. Thank you for watching another session of Scott Wisdom. I know some of you are skeptical about this series, but believe me, I believe some friends and family and years from now are going to look back at these videos and find these videos helpful. Long-term strategy. Don't always think in the short term. Bye-bye. God bless you all.